I'm Hazel, and I would like to tell you a story. My parents, together with a younger sister named Lily, made up an average family when I was growing up. It sounds good, doesn't it? Well, things weren't always bright and sunny. Lily was challenging, to say the least. She was the type of child that, if she didn't get her way, would scream bloody murder. She was also quite skilled at manipulating our parents. They would go above and beyond to prevent her from having one of her well-known meltdowns. My mother would beg in a strained voice, Hazel, honey, could you kindly let Lily have the last cookie? You are aware of her tendencies. I would nod, thinking of nothing else I could do. I was the one who didn't cause any trouble. The decent girl. I quickly discovered that it was simpler to blend in with the surroundings than to take on Hurricane Lily. As we got older, the routine remained the same. I just tried to stay out of the way while Lily insisted and our parents gave in. I lost myself in literature and my studies, hoping to one day get away from it all. The day finally arrived when I received a full-ride scholarship acceptance to college. I experienced a mixture of emotions as I packed my bags, excitement for the new life that awaited me, and remorse for abandoning my parents to take care of Lily on my own. However, I buried that shame deep. I needed to start living on my own. My mother gave me a strong hug as I packed everything I owned into my beat-up old automobile the following morning. She whispered, We're so proud of you, Hazel. You're going to do great things. Dad gave me a shoulder slap, his eyes looking suspiciously bright. Remember, you can always come home if you need to. I nodded, not believing I could talk. Lily remained silent as she observed from the porch, her arms folded. A breath of fresh air was what college was like. I didn't had to give up what I wanted or tread carefully around other people's sentiments for the first time in my life. I immersed myself into my studies with the intention of taking full use of this chance. Back home, things carried on as usual. Naturally, Lily chose not to move out. Rather, she wed Tom, her high school love, immediately following graduation. What area did they choose to call home? With our folks, naturally. Mom would occasionally call, sounding fatigued but attempting to seem positive. She would say, Lily and Tom are still getting settled. It's nice having the grandkids around. However, I could see through the words. Lily was taking advantage of our parents for free housework and child care. She would quickly give birth to two children while never working. Yes, Tom worked. But from what I could tell, he wasn't exactly making large amounts. During a rare visit home one day, I heard Lily in the kitchen conversing with Mom. Please watch the kids for me tonight, Mom. I want to go out with Tom. Lily, honey, your father and I had plans. Oh, please, hurry up. You don't really have any critical tasks to complete. We don't have any nights off. Peering around the corner, I saw Mom's shoulders sag in surrender. All right, sweetheart. We're going to watch them. I couldn't say anything, but it made my blood boil. I bit my tongue and concentrated on my own life, because, in the end, I was the one who had left. I was hired as a manager by an international corporation just after I graduated. It wasn't simple. In order to advance, I put in a lot of overtime, took on extra work, and did whatever it required. But it was worthwhile. I became my department's chief in a few of years. I was pinching pennies wherever I could, but Lily insisted on having our parents buy her groceries. I didn't go out on wild nights or wear nice clothes, so it wasn't glamorous. But I did manage to save some savings. The apartment arrived first. It was a modest one-bedroom, nothing special, but mine. I was standing in the empty living room the day I received the keys, barely believing it was real. Next was the car, again, nothing fancy, but trustworthy and fully paid for. I worked hard and kept my head down the entire time. Though I didn't have a very active social life, that was acceptable. I was creating something that would remain untouchable for me. I wasn't really thinking about dating. I occasionally went out, but not too often. Well, 
until I got to know Jake. Jake was unique from the beginning. Neither did he try to win me over with posh restaurants or polished conversation. Rather, he made me laugh, pushed me, and most of all, he appreciated my ambition. On our third date, he shook his head and said, You're something else, Hazel. Most people would be burned out working as hard as you do, but you, you're thriving. I shrugged, feeling a little awkward about the compliment. I just know what I want, that's all. He grabbed my hand by reaching across the table. Well, I know what I want too, and it's you. I felt my carefully crafted barriers begin to crack for the first time in years. Perhaps, just perhaps, there was more to life than job and financial savings. After dating for a few years, Jake eventually asked me out. To be quite honest, I was first apprehensive. I'd never really thought about getting married because I was always more concerned with my job and my financial security. However, Jake had a talent for helping me see outside the boundaries I had set for myself. On the day of the wedding, I was excited in spite of my doubts. I mean, this was my day. I was getting married to my beloved. Then Lily appeared. With a suspiciously bridal-like white dress, my sister waltzed into the bridal suite. Oh, Hazel, she turned around and said, isn't my dress so adorable? To look my best on your special day was my goal. I stared at her, speechless. Was she seriously trying to upstage me at my own wedding? Lily, I finally managed. Don't you think that dress is a bit inappropriate for a bridesmaid? She pouted, looking around at our cousins who were helping me get ready. What do you mean? I think I look great. Don't I look great, girls? Our cousins, not wanting to cause a scene, mumbled awkward agreements. I took a deep breath, reminding myself that this was my day. I wasn't going to let Lily's antics ruin it. It's fine, I said, turning back to the mirror. Let's just get this show on the road. The ceremony itself was beautiful. Jake's eyes lit up when he saw me walking down the aisle, and in that moment, all the stress and family drama faded away. This was about us, about our love and our future together. But at the reception, things got interesting. More than once, I overheard guests asking Lily if she was the bride. She'd giggle and say, Oh no, that's my sister. But doesn't this dress look amazing on me? Jake, bless him, did his best to keep me calm. Don't let it get to you, he whispered, squeezing my hand. Everyone knows you're the star of this show. And he was right. Despite Lily's best efforts, the day was still ours. We danced. We laughed. We celebrated with our friends and family. And at the end of the night, as Jake and I drove off to start our honeymoon, I felt a sense of peace. After the wedding, Jake and I settled into a rhythm. We moved into his apartment, which was bigger and in a nicer area than mine. I decided to keep my old place and rent it out. Just another investment for the future, I thought. I threw myself back into work with renewed energy. Jake was supportive, always there with a cup of coffee when I was burning the midnight oil, or a shoulder to lean on when deals fell through. But it wasn't just about work anymore. I started looking into investments, particularly securities. It was a whole new world, full of risks and potential rewards. And payoff it did. Five years flew by, and suddenly, we found ourselves sitting on a decent nest egg. That's when I had an idea. Let's buy a vacation home, I suggested to Jake one evening. Somewhere my parents could use too to get away from everything. Jake knew what I meant by everything. My sister, her husband, their three kids. It was a lot for my parents to handle. We found the perfect place, a beautiful villa on a lake just outside the city. It had everything. A large barbecue area, a sprawling terrace, three bedrooms, and a view that took your breath away. The moment I saw it, I knew it was the one. The day we closed the deal, I called my parents. Mom, Dad, I've got a surprise for you, I said, barely containing my excitement. When they arrived at the villa, 
my mom's eyes filled with tears. Oh, Hazel, she whispered, looking around in awe. This is, this is too much. Dad was speechless, running his hand along the smooth kitchen countertop like he couldn't believe it was real. It's not too much, I insisted. You deserve this, a place to relax, to get away from, from your sister. Dad finished, a hint of guilt in his voice. I nodded. But listen, there's one thing. Can we, can we not tell Lily that I bought this? Can we say it's yours, that you bought it with your savings? Mom looked confused. But why? I sighed, thinking about the phone call I'd had with Lily just the day before. She'd asked to borrow money for a car, and I'd said no. I could only imagine how she'd react if she found out about this place. It's just easier this way, I said. Please. They agreed, albeit reluctantly. Little did I know the storm this white lie would stir up. A few days later, I got a call from Mom. She sounded exhausted. Lily found out about the villa, she said. She wants us to sell it. She says we should give her the money instead so she can buy a sports car and travel the world. I could feel my blood pressure rising. And what did you say? We said no, of course. But Hazel, it was bad. She screamed, she cried, said we loved you more, that we always favored you. I closed my eyes, feeling a familiar mixture of guilt and frustration. I'm so sorry, Mom. I never meant to cause trouble. It's not your fault, sweetie, Mom said, but I could hear the weariness in her voice. Your father and I, we've decided to move to the villa full time. We just can't, we can't do this anymore. As I hung up the phone, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. My parents were finally standing up for themselves, finally taking a step back from Lily's chaos. But at the same time, a sense of unease settled in my stomach. I knew this wasn't the end of it. Lily wouldn't let this go without a fight. It was a sunny Saturday when Jake and I decided to surprise my parents with a visit to the villa. But as we got closer, something felt off. The sound of loud music filled the air, and I could see cars parked haphazard on the lawn. We pulled up to the villa, and the scene that greeted us was chaos. People were everywhere. Drinking, laughing, kids running around, screaming. And right in the middle of it all was Lily, holding court like she owned the place. When she saw us, her eyes narrowed. What are you doing here? she demanded. I looked around, trying to spot my parents. Where's mom and dad? Lily waved her hand dismissively. Oh, mom's out walking with the kids. Dad's gone to get more meat for the barbecue. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You sent them out while you're having a party? It's a celebration, Lily exclaimed. We're christening the new family vacation home. Not that you'd understand, Miss Workaholic. I felt my blood begin to boil. Lily, this isn't... She cut me off. Look, Hazel, why don't you and Jake just leave? Your sour face is going to ruin everyone's mood. I stood there speechless. Jake put his hand on my arm. Come on, he said quietly. Let's go. As we drove away, I couldn't shake the image of Lily lording over my villa, the villa I'd bought for our parents. I can't believe her, I fumed, using mom and dad like that, treating the place like it's hers. Jake sighed. Maybe it's just a one-time thing, but it wasn't. Over the next few weeks, I heard from Mom about the constant stream of parties and get-togethers Lily was hosting at the villa, and when she wasn't partying, she was dumping her kids on our parents. The kids are missing school, Mom confided in me during one of our calls. She sounded exhausted. Lily says it's not a big deal for Tommy. He's only four. But Emily and Jack are falling behind. By the way, I forgot to mention that Lily gave birth to her third child shortly after my wedding. I'd had enough. The next time I saw Lily, I confronted her. You need to stop taking advantage of mom and dad, I said. They're not your personal babysitters and the kids need to be in school. Lily rolled her eyes. 
Don't be such a killjoy, Hazel. Mom and Dad love having the kids around. But I could see the toll it was taking on our parents. They looked tired, worn down. This wasn't the peaceful retirement I'd envisioned for them when I bought the villa. After several more failed attempts to reason with Lily, I made a difficult decision. I contacted Child Protective Services. The investigation was quick and discreet. Lily got a formal reprimand, and suddenly the kids were back in school full time. The endless parties at the villa stopped too. Mom called me a few days later. Things have calmed down, she said, and I could hear the relief in her voice. Your father and I are actually getting to enjoy the place now. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. This was what I'd wanted all along, for my parents to have a peaceful place to retire. But my relief was short-lived. The next time I saw Lily, her eyes were full of venom. I know what you did, she spat. Calling CPS on your own sister? You're a traitor, Hazel. I'll never forgive you for this. A few months passed quickly. It was my mom's birthday, and Jake and I decided to surprise her with a weekend visit to the villa. We had visions of a quiet family celebration, maybe a nice dinner on the terrace overlooking the lake. But as we pulled up to the house, those dreams quickly evaporated. The place was in chaos. Music blared from speakers. People were everywhere, and kids were running wild across the lawn. It looked like Lily had invited half the town. We made our way inside, where I found Mom in the kitchen, looking exhausted and on the verge of tears. Happy birthday, Mom, I said, giving her a hug. She clung to me a little too tightly. Oh, Hazel, she whispered. I just wanted a quiet day with family, but Lily, she invited all these people. Your father and I have been running around all day, serving drinks, cooking food. I stepped out onto the lawn, searching for Lily in the crowd. When I spotted her laughing with a group of friends, I marched over. Lily, we need to talk, I said firmly. This is Mom's birthday. She wanted a family day, not this. I gestured at the chaos around us. Lily laughed loudly. Oh, lighten up. Mom loves having people over. Stop being such a buzzkill. Frustrated, I walked over to a group of guests near the speakers. Excuse me, I said, raising my voice to be heard over the music. Could you please turn this down? It's too loud. The guests, clearly drunk, just laughed and turned the volume up higher. As I stood there trying to figure out what to do next, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Lily was huddled with a group of kids, pointing in my direction and giggling. With horror, I realized she was handing them ice cream cones and encouraging them to throw them at me. Before I could react, the first scoop of ice cream flew past my head. I ducked and it hit a woman behind me square in the face. Chaos erupted. More ice cream was flying, kids were screaming, and adults were yelling. Lily's voice rose above the commotion. Look what you've done, Hazel. You're ruining everything as usual. The crowd, fueled by alcohol and Lily's accusations, started to turn ugly. Men and women were shouting, moving towards Jake and me with clenched fists. I felt Jake's hand on my arm. Hazel, we need to get out of here, he said urgently. But I'd had enough. This was my parents' home, the home I'd bought for them. This had to stop. I pulled out my phone and dialed 911. I'm calling the police, I announced loudly. The police arrived quickly, lights flashing. As it turned out, they'd already received noise complaints from the neighbors. Who owns this property? One of the officers asked. I stepped forward. I do. I'm Hazel Johnson. My parents live here, but these people... I gestured to the crowd are here without my invitation. The officers nodded and quickly got to work, ushering the drunk guests off the property and warning them about the consequences of starting a fight. As the police cars drove away with the last of the uninvited guests, an eerie silence fell over the villa. The aftermath of the chaotic party was strewn all around. Empty bottles, discarded plates, 
and lingering tension in the air. Lily stood in the middle of the living room, her face a mix of shock and anger. What do you mean this is your house? She demanded, her voice shrill. I took a deep breath. I bought it for mom and dad to retire in peace. Lily's eyes narrowed, then suddenly her demeanor changed. A sickly smile spread across her face. Well, well, little Miss Perfect. Always full of surprises, she said, sauntering over to me. Her voice dropped to a conspiratorial whisper. Listen, Hazel, let's forget about this little misunderstanding. I've got a proposition for you. I raised an eyebrow, wary. What are you talking about? This property, Lily gestured around grandly. It's got potential. Why don't you sign it over to me? I could build a few more houses, rent them out. I've been looking for a passive income opportunity for ages. You've already got your fancy job. Why not help your sister out? Absolutely not, I said firmly. This house is for mom and dad. It's not for sale or development. Lily's face darkened. You'll regret this, Hazel. Mark my words. With that, she stormed out, her husband and kids trailing behind her. I turned to Mom, who looked shell-shocked. I'm so sorry, Mom. This isn't how your birthday was supposed to go. To my surprise, she pulled me into a hug. Oh, honey, thank you for standing up for us. For everything. I spent the rest of the day helping Mom clean up the mess, but Lily's threat kept echoing in my mind. I knew my sister well enough to know she wouldn't let this go easily. Before Jake and I left, I made a decision. I hired a security company to install hidden cameras around the property and set up an alarm system that would alert my phone if anyone entered the grounds. Two weeks later, my phone buzzed with an alert from the villa security system. Someone had entered the property. Worried it might be a false alarm triggered by my parents, I called Mom. Mom, are you and Dad at the villa? A pause occurred. No, sweetie. It's the old house again. Lily insisted that we come assist with the children. We have spent a week here. My heart fell. I quickly left for the villa with Jake after telling Mom I will give her a call back. We were met with a terrible scene. The lovely house I had purchased for my parents was completely destroyed. There was graffiti on the walls, toppled furniture, and random objects all over the place. I became enraged and dialed the police number. I showed them the security footage when they got there. Without a doubt, it was Lily and her husband damaging the property out of intoxication. After a few days, my phone rang. It was Lily. Her words, you need to drop the charges, were direct and unqualified. We were hauled in by the police to be questioned. They are discussing filing charges for trespassing and vandalism. Hazel, you have to put an end to this. I inhaled deeply. Lily? No. I finished tidying up your spills. I have had enough of protecting the family's calm at the expense of my own. You can now speak with my attorney. The weeks that followed the villa event were filled with family strife and court cases. I was committed to seeing this through to the conclusion so that Lily's damaging conduct could finally stop. I had all of the damage to the villa meticulously documented and had it thoroughly cleaned and repaired. It came to slightly over $10,000 in all. My attorney suggested that I file a lawsuit for the entire sum, and I eventually complied. The court hearing day finally arrived. Lily and her husband occupied one side of the courtroom while I sat on the other. She refused to even give me a look. The judge heard testimony from both parties and went over the evidence, which included security camera footage. Ultimately, his choice was evident. He declared, The court finds in favor of the plaintiff. The defendants are ordered to pay $10,000 in damages. That wasn't all, though. The judge further sentenced the trespasser and property damager to a suspended term due to the seriousness of the offense and the overwhelming evidence. Lily and her family suffered greatly in the wake of the trial. Her spouse, who had previously survived on charm and familial ties, now found himself having trouble finding employment. Even if a person's criminal record was suspended, 
no one wanted to hire them. Lily, who had never held a job before, was compelled to look for one. Through the grapevine, I learned that she was working as a waitress at a nearby diner and that she returned home every night worn out. For my part, I made the tough choice to sever all relationships. I cut off all contact with Lily and served her with a formal notice prohibiting her from entering the property. It hurt, but it had to be done. After being spared from Lily's incessant requests, Mom and Dad moved into the villa full time. It was amazing how they had changed. I hadn't seen them in decades, but they appeared years younger and more at ease. Dad told me, We should have done this years ago when I saw him once a month. We love having the grandkids over, but now it's on our terms, a few hours at a time, and then back to our peaceful life. As a parting gift to Lily, they had left their former home, but they had made it plain that their financial assistance ended there. Lily needed to get up on her own two feet. For me, things were getting better. My relationship with Jake was better than ever. Work was going great. And then, well, we got some unexpected news. One evening, I told Jake I was pregnant, my voice trembling with worry and joy. His expression brightened like a yuletide tree. We both laughed and sobbed as he lifted me up and twirled me around. Six months along as I write this, we are expecting a young daughter. While I'm busy setting up the nursery, Jake and I are reading every parenting book we can find. I still occasionally think about Lily. When I last heard, she and her husband were on the verge of divorce and were fighting all the time. I have some sadness for her because of the shambles her life has become. However, a larger part of me feels liberated, free from the duty to constantly resolve her issues and play the role of peacekeeper at the price of my own happiness.